This video will be the introduction and also the uh, help file, uh, video help file for our oscilloscope and spectrogram map. Let's get started. So the first thing I would like to show you is our three stereo modes. Um, let's, uh, let's take Xeon off for the moment and get a microphone on here. There we go. Um, so these three modes are L plus R means you're seeing an average of left and right channels. L and R means the left and right channels separately. And XY means you're seeing the left uh, the value of the left channel on one axis and the value of the right channel on the other axis. Now what you're seeing now is my voice coming through from the microphone. I can use a pinch gesture to zoom this and uh, this is in mono because there's a mono mic on the iPad. We know it's in mono not just because we know there's a mono mic but also because on this graph we're seeing everything in one line. It means that um, you know, as the volume in the left channel gets bigger, the volume in the right channel gets bigger, they go up together, they go down together, they stay in lockstep and it creates a line. And you'll see this really clearly if we use uh, this plugin. This is the multiband Haas effect plugin that we make. And what I'm doing here is splitting the audio into four bands. And then on this yellow band, which is, let's say the mid-range band, I'm putting 25 milliseconds of delay on the right channel and no delay on the left channel. So that creates, that creates a, a wide stereo sound just because when we put this in, you're going to see the left and right channels don't go together in lockstep anymore. Here it goes, we're engaging this, and now we see it's in stereo. Um, so uh, we know it's in stereo now because it's not stuck on one line, and that means the left and right channels have different uh, information in them. Uh, this duration adjustment, if you increase it, it just means that the line it's drawing represents a longer time interval or uh, shorten it and it's faster. I have the default at about 20 milliseconds. You see here a correlation uh, report. That is checking on this line that it's drawing how much similarity is there between the left and right channels. So if it's 100% correlation, let's take the stereoizer off. Now it's 100% correlation, which means left and right channels are exactly the same all the time, which indicates a mono signal. As we put this stereoizer on, I'm going to take, uh, take it down to a smaller number of uh, delay. So now I'm only delaying five samples on the right channel, and you can see there's 90, about 98% correlation between right and left channels. But as I increase this delay, the correlation will drop. Um, when I really make a big delay, we should get to a point where basically the left and right channels are, are associated randomly. Um, so the, the main thing that you would do with, uh, with this thing, other than just play around, is you'd use it to, to check if your mix has phase issues. So if you see the correlation going down into the negative numbers, that's an indication that you've got phase cancellation happening between your left and right channels, and you don't want that. Um, now, when you have a wide stereo image, you're going to occasionally see negative numbers here. Um, let's put this back on. You're going to occasionally see a negative number here, but as long as most of the time it's between 0 and 100 positive, then you're okay. You're not having phase problems. Um, I'll just leave that plug-in going. So those are our, our three stereo modes. And then under timing, we have an, another three modes. Um, I think before talking about timing, let's just talk about this because it's simple and easy to understand. On the right, we have a spectrogram. This shows what frequencies were present in your audio. There's frequencies labeled here on the right at what time. Um, let me whistle. You'll see this more clearly. Um, so this is just indicating what notes, uh, what frequencies I was whistling. For example, this looks like it's about 1.2 kilohertz, but if I want to know more exactly, I can touch the axis and it drops a line down, and when I'm touching that line, I see this is a D-sharp MIDI note 87 in the sixth octave at 1,244.5 hertz. But you can see my line is a little bit above and now a little bit below. So the D-sharp is, is above what I whistled, D, D is below. What I whistled is somewhere between the two. I'm going to take it at D sharp, and then I'm going to use this fine tuning adjustment and take us down a few cents until we're right in the middle. 
and now I see that this is D sharp MIDI note 87 sixth octave but it's 39 cents flat um, so that's a nice way to get uh, uh, find out what frequency something is and if I resume now we're back to a real-time view again um, I can pause resume anytime I want and then on the other side of the graph I have just a pure oscilloscope view I'm gonna double tap here to reset the zoom of the vertical axis um, let's let's create some interesting events and let's say I want to know exactly what happened here so I can use a pinch gesture and we can zoom in all the way and we can see exactly what was going on there we can see what frequencies were present there now the spectrogram automatically adjusts its FFT size so when I zoom in I, I don't get a lot of detail uh, about what frequencies are there because it's trying to get more detailed timing information so I'm going to zoom out and you can see automatically as we zoom out we're getting more detailed uh, view on the frequency axis um, and when we zoom out all the way we're getting more information there so that is the continuous mode the next mode I want to talk about is frequency mode and this works really well uh, we'll leave that on but not this this works really well if I have uh, an instrument as input, for example, if I use a synth. Uh, I very much like using this synth uh, called Xeon from Beep Street. Uh, they're not paying me to say that. I really do like it. Uh, and so let's get that one going. I'm going to make this a bit smaller so we can see everything here. Good. Um, so I'm going to play a note. Let's play C4. Uh, we got to resume. I was in pause mode. Play C4. So now I'm seeing um, the spectrum of what, what happens spectrally. I see the fundamental note and then all the harmonics above that. Uh, or I can see the waveform. Um, but for this mode, it's especially helpful to see the waveform and the spectrum at the same time. So the first thing I want to do zoom in a little bit on that waveform that looks good and uh, now we can do this let's play a different note um, here we're playing well let's say we don't know what note that is right it's a secret note I'm covering it up I can figure that out by putting this line down over the note and now I see that it is third octave a MIDI note 57 at 220 Hertz but we can do better than that. Suppose that our, our instrument is out of tune. So let me keep playing this. I'm going to take this flat a few cents. Um, well, when it's out of tune, the waveform won't be stable anymore because this frequency mode is timing itself to redraw the screen on an exact uh, timer that follows the wavelength, uh, the period of oscillation of this particular note that I've selected. But because my note is flat, it's not in time anymore, and that's why you see it drifting toward the left. No problem, though. We can just adjust the tuning here until the wave becomes stable. It might not be perfectly stable, but when it almost stops, I, I know where the tuning is. So this is, um, sorry, this is uh, A in the third octave, and it's three cents flat. If I reset back to being in tune, then I've got to reset this, and now we're seeing stability indicating that this is exactly, uh, these, these two apps are exactly in agreement about how uh, the note A, A in the third octave should be tuned. Um, so that is, the, uh, that is the frequency mode, and the last thing I want to show you is trigger mode. Um, so I'm going to set the level back down. For trigger mode, let's set, um, let's set the sustain down a little bit and yeah that looks good and I'm gonna zoom out okay so I'm now triggering at a level of zero and that's indicated by the level that I said is indicated by this line um, I'm gonna move the line I'm gonna move the line to trigger up at a higher level right so when my trigger is here it means that if I play a, a, a musical note or any sound that's quieter than this level. In other words, the waveform doesn't reach this height. Nothing will happen. To illustrate that, let's go. Let's go above the, the peak, right? So now I'm playing, and it's not. I should re hit resume. 
I'm going to wait. If I wait for three seconds, the screen will clear. Right. Um, oh, it's still drawing. Let's get a little higher yet. Okay, let's wait for it to clear. Okay. So now it won't draw because this the volume of the input is below the trigger level. But if I just take the trigger level down, there it is. Once the, um, once the volume of the input crosses that trigger threshold, then it will draw. Um, so this is a nice way, if you want to look at the attack of a node, I can hit it and then I can pause it and then we can um, zoom in and see, you know, if our, maybe we want to know what our attack time setting does. Let's set it all the way down to zero and see what happens. Um, yeah, that's interesting to see. So with the attack time of zero, there's a little, a little click, click noise going on at the beginning. Uh, I want to get some more look ahead so I can zoom in on that. Uh, or if I set the attack longer, we'll see what that looks like. Resume. Looks like when the attack is long, I don't, I don't, uh, don't have enough volume to cross the trigger point. There it is. I'm gonna need more look ahead. Ah, uh, this attack is so long; it's longer than my view on the screen. There it is. Uh, now I got that long attack showing. Right. Um, so we've seen now, I think we've seen everything. Um, that there's a uh, trigger, this look ahead. I'll show you more clearly what look ahead does um, when I have this input. Right. Let's set the trigger level up. I need to reset the zoom. I'm double tapping to reset the zoom on that axis. There it is. Um, so with look ahead at zero, when the input volume crosses the trigger point, it draws. But sometimes I may want to see what happened just before that trigger point and that, I'll pause that. That's what the look ahead is for in case I need to look back a few milliseconds. Okay, now I think we're really done. Um, if you have other questions about this app, of course, you can contact us via the form on our website at bluemango.com. Um, uh, we have this logo that looks like a mango. It's not a mango, but we, uh, we added the extra O because when we were naming our company, bluemango.com was taken. Um, so you can go to that website and contact us. If you uh, want to buy this app, there will be a link in the description of this video. If you want to see more uh, videos like this, hit subscribe so that next time we do a video, it comes up in your YouTube feed. And if you just want to be nice and help us uh, build our YouTube channel, hit like, uh, because that will help us a little bit. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy this app, and we'll see you in the next video.